Hello, and thanks for tuning in to Thy Kingdom Come broadcast today. This is Pastor Vivalette Poole, and today we are still talking about the Sabbath day, and uh, we did want to go into what Sabbath day keeping might look like. So today, I, I think we left off last week talking about how Jesus said that the Sabbath day was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. So um, we should keep the Sabbath holy unto the creator who made who made it for us. So I guess the question is, how should we keep the Sabbath day holy? Now we know there's a lot of confusion around this day, uh, the day that's the Sabbath. And we know that the Sabbath is uh, according to Webster's Dictionary and most encyclopedias would be Saturday. Now, the seventh day of the week or the Sabbath day, um, the Jewish Pharisees in Jesus' day had added many do's and don'ts to the Sabbath law. And Jesus didn't agree with all their restrictions. His healing miracles on the Sabbath seemed to show that the Messiah went out of his way to show the Jews how wrong they were in Sabbath day observance. But in breaking the man-made Sabbath day laws, um, Uh, Jesus did thereby tell us that there was no restrictions on the Sabbath. Um, however, he did tell us that man may do as he pleases on the Sabbath, or did he? By, by no means did he say that. Let us examine the Bible teachings of how to keep the Sabbath and apply these principles to modern day circumstances. Uh, you know, Imagine you're taking a college course in Sabbath day keeping and you have before you a textbook, the Bible, and appropriate sections marked, marked off that relate to the Sabbath day, um, why the Sabbath is important, and uh, earlier series. Now, in this, in these, the Bible uh, principles of the Sabbath keeping, the Sabbath day is a day to cease from creating, working with the creation, and appreciate what God has done in the world and is doing in us. According to Genesis 2, the Sabbath day is there to realize that man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Three, heavy food preparation is to be done on the day before the Sabbath so that there's no baking or heavy cooking on the Sabbath, according to each, uh, Exodus 16. We should not do any several work on the Sabbath, any kind of work. Now, this includes our entire family, even our servants and beasts of burden, strangers who live among us even, according to Exodus 20 and Deuteronomy 5. Now, we are not to kindle fires for industrial purposes on the Sabbath, according to Exodus 35. Boy, does that kind of make things kind of difficult, doesn't it? For people that have jobs, right? The eternal intent is to allow us to be free to rejoice and rest on the Sabbath, unburdened by routine and physical responsibilities. The Sabbath day is a holy convocation. We should meet with others in worship, if at all possible, according to Leviticus 23, and we should, re we should read the Bible aloud, study the God's law and statutes, according to Luke 4, Acts 13, and Nehemiah chapter 8. Staying at home, it's not a biblical Sabbath rule. In fact, God said, abide ye every man in his own place. Let no man go out of his place on the Sabbath day. This refers to going outside the camp to gather manna, to do physical work or gathering food. According to Exodus 16 and 29, it is not a general thing against leaving one's place of dwelling on the Sabbath. So we want to make sure that you understand that you can leave home on the Sabbath. The gathering six on the Sabbath day was breaking the Sabbath according to Numbers 15. So it was physical labor, some kind of physical labor there. And God's against physical labor on the Sabbath. The Sabbath should be a day of delight and rejoicing, a day in which we forsake our thoughts and thank God's thoughts according to Isaiah 56 and 58. We are not to do unnecessary work on the Sabbath, such as carrying burdens of any type, according to Jeremiah 7, chapter 17. 
so we can be free to rest and worship the creator. We are not to buy or sell on the Sabbath, according to Nehemiah uh, chapter uh, 13. In the following Savior, Savior's example, we should do good on the Sabbath, visit and comfort the sick, contact people and serve them, according to Mark, Luke, and John. And we, sh we should do um, spiritual work on the Sabbath, serving others, according to John 5. We can... We can even pluck a few ears of corn to eat on the Sabbath day, but do not harvest the whole crop, <laughs> according to um, Matthew 12 and Mark 2nd, second, second chapter. The Sabbath is a time of prayer. Uh, the Sabbath is a time to reason with others about spiritual principles and for ministers to teach the word of God. We talked about that last week, according to Acts 17 and 2. 18 and 4 and verse 11 where Jesus did teach in the temple in the synagogue on the Sabbath day. The Sabbath is a time for healing. It's a time to do all the good you know on the Sabbath. Singing is a part of Sabbath worship and according to Psalms 92 it's called the Sabbath Psalm. It speaks of singing on the Sabbath. These basic Sabbath principles show that the Bible does specifically many Sabbath, Sabbath do's and don'ts. Now, according to Jewish Sabbath rules, looking into the history of Sabbath keeping, we find that Jewish um, categories of work prohibited on the Sabbath, which are writing more than one letter of an alphabet, bet was prohibited. Um, practicing medicine was not allowed unless life was in, endangered. Uh, a man with a toothache could rinse his mouth out with vinegar on the Sabbath as long as he had swallowed it that was eating. But he could not rinse his mouth out, then spit out the vinegar. That was practicing medicine. Wow. So there are a lot of little uh, Sabbath, Jewish Sabbath rules and things like that that the Jews did uh, exercise in keeping the Sabbath day. Um, there, there were positive duties of the Sabbath observance for the Jew, wearing one's best shoes, um, eat at least three meals during the day, read the Kaddush, a special blessing, sanctification before the evening meal, read the, uh, the, the, the Kaddush in the synagogue service or the, 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 the Sedra and the prophets, um, Read a special blessing of the end of the Sabbath and, of course, emphasizing the separation of distinction between the Sabbath days and weekdays. So um, there are a lot of different Sabbath rules, and I really uh, don't have time to get into all of that. Um, however, you know, we want to talk about a little bit how Jesus did travel on the Sabbath. So it was called a Sabbath day journey, according to Matthew chapter 24 and 20. Um, how, uh, how much travels is allowed on the Sabbath? Jesus told us to pray that our fleeing would not be on the Sabbath. So according to Matthew 24 and 20, did you used to define a Sabbath day's journey as 2000 cubits or about a, a thousand yards beyond the city walls? The Mount of Olives was about a Sabbath day journey from Jerusalem, according to Acts, uh, 1 and verse 12. And in Exodus 16 and 29, God told the Israelites, do not go out of their places on the seventh day. The 2,000 cubit limit was conjured from the space to be kept between the ark and the, and the people. Now, according to Joshua 3 and 4, the circumference outside the walls of the Levitical cities to be counted as the suburbs, according to Numbers 35 and 5. So the Sabbath day journey being 2,000 cubits outside the city's walls is not a law of God, but an interpretation of a tradition of the Jews. Today, some may have to travel long distances in order to worship God with brethren on the Sabbath day for worship services. Nevertheless, the principle is unnecessary and travel is permitted. Uh, within the Sabbath day's rest. Now, let's talk about the ox in the ditch for a minute. Um, according to Luke chapter 14 through five, uh, verse 5, Jesus said, which of you shall have an ass or an ox fallen into a pit and will not straightway pull him out on the Sabbath day? And from this, many have argued that their job was an ox or in the ditch because their employer required them to work on the Sabbath. 
well, they would lose their job and be unable to support their families. Or some less liberal would say that an occasional emergency on the job might require them to work on the Sabbath. But to avoid losing jobs, some have gone ahead and worked on the Sabbath and given the whole day's pay as an offering. However, has the Lord as great delight in has has the Lord great delight in burnt off offerings and sacrifices as he obeys the voice of God, behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of lambs. According to 1 Samuel 15 and 22, God doesn't want sacrifice and offerings as much as, much as he wants sincere trust and obedience. So how often do an ox, how often is an ox in a ditch or emergencies occur? The ox and the ass are a sure-footed, Preachers, and someday our family hopes to ride donkeys down the bottom of the Grand Canyon. We may be literally entrusting our lives to sure footed donkeys, but that will not fall off the edge. But they won't fall off the edge like the odds against oxen and donkeys falling into a ditch or on a regular basis as very high. A farmer could go through a whole lifetime and count on one hand the times he had to pull cattle out of the ditch. Since the Sabbath day is one day in seven, and the odds are at least seven in one against these instances happening on the Sabbath, use the ox in the ditch principle um, as rarely as possible. So today we think about the ox being in the ditch as being something that has to be done, um, something that we just can't help from happening. Something like an accident, somebody getting hurt, somebody being rushed to the hospital, just genuine emergencies like that, burning houses, power failures, accidents, other occurrences should entail injury, a loss of personal property. It does not include circumstances when a person pushes his ox into a ditch by not properly preparing for the Sabbath, nor does it include harvesting or plowing on the Sabbath. A veterinarian once used the ox in the ditch principle to justify conducting his normal business on the Sabbath. This is not proper. The Savior did not look for people to heal on the Sabbath. And of the last days of following the abomination of desolation, which Jesus was talking about in Matthew 24 and 20, he, he wanted us to know or say, he wanted to say that uh, we should pray that our flight not be in the winter neither on the Sabbath day. This is proof that the Sabbath would not be done away with, even to the end of time. An emergency flight, while not strictly prohibited, would not be keeping with God's purpose for the Sabbath or the day of rest, worship, or renovation. On the Sabbath day, let's talk about what Jesus did not do. Okay, this is what Jesus did not do on the Sabbath. He didn't sleep till 10 a.m., Stay by himself and pray and study all day, prepare a large meal, buy or sell, or go on a long trip. However, on the Sabbath day, Jesus did attend worship services where he read and expounded on the scriptures. He prayed to his heavenly father and, and, and had Bible study and studied the Bible. He took a walk through the cornfields and appreciated God's creation. He did heal people and tend to their physical and spiritual needs. So, that being said, so what should we do on the Sabbath day? So, people legitimately want to know which activities are appropriate, appropriate or inappropriate on the Sabbath. Should the Sabbath be viewed as an observed primarily as timely as a timely uh, activity or inactivity? The intent behind our action or inaction is important. Uh, especially in the eternal life sector. The Savior, as we have seen, spent the Sabbath not in a restful relaxation, but in active services to others. Thus, we see that the Sabbath day should be followed as a day of special activities rather than inactivity. So it's not solely just a day of rest. It is a day to do good in the name of Jesus Christ on that day. People are different and have different physical needs, so resting on the Sabbath could mean different things to a lumberjack and an office worker, or to an older person or a youth. 
So Sabbath keepers sometimes neglect to recognize that their children have different needs than adults. Sitting long hours may be a burden to children. Yes, children should be taught to be to sit still and listen to the adults talk about the Bible and spiritual matters. However, parents should spend quality time with their children on the Sabbath to ensure that that day is a delight to them as well. So uh, in the book uh, by Samuel Bashati, uh, in his book, The Sabbath of the New Testament, page 22, I'm sorry, 228 through 231, he gives three guidelines to determining suitable Sabbath activities. Number one, he said the Sabbath day activity should be God-centered and rather rather than self-centered. Any recreational activity should not be an end in itself, but as a means to express delight in the Lord. Playing a Bible game to see who can score the most points in a competitive spirit is foolish and selfish. The uh Challenge is not only to choose the proper uh, Sabbath activities, but also to engage in them in a way that they will contribute to honoring the eternal or to God, rather. Um, the Sabbath activities should ensure freedom and joy of everybody. For an example, is a Sabbath afternoon picnic a good example? The activity can be time of joy for everyone. In a, if a, inadequate preparations have been made before the beginning of the Sabbath, um, or if persons have to spend a long time doing the Sabbath preparing food, then it deprives them of the joy of the Sabbath. And, his, and, and this is not rest, neither is this right in the eyesight of God. So the third guideline he lists is... Uh, to select proper Sabbath activities, they should contribute to our mental, emotional, and physical renewal, meaning our minds, our spirits, our souls, and our bodies should uh, be, uh, it should be con contributed, it should be able to uh, benefit us in those three areas, not to create exhaustion or, um, this dispensation um, after the Sabbath is over, then you should be mentally and physically recharged to face another work week. So truly everyone can experience, experience the joys of the Sabbath by following these overall guidelines. So um, this is how we suppose that we should keep the Sabbath. You know, let's talk about how uh, we dress up. Now, of course, children will dress up and play games with the family, listen to Bible stories, ask questions from the Bible, from the parents, and not play with neighborhood friends, not engaged in com um, competitive sports. That's what they're saying, uh, how uh, Sabbath day, it should be spent with family, uh, mostly. Uh, and fam I would say family, uh, uh, close friends even, if you have, you know, if you don't have family. Um, adults, can put behind them no housework, cleaning, ironing, washing, heavy cooking, dress up, and take the family to Sabbath day services if available. Otherwise, conduct a family Bible study and prayer time. You can take a Sabbath day drive or walk in a beautiful place, but just no buying or selling. Spend time with the family and visit the elderly and just read. And so it talks a lot here about... Um, you know, different things that we can do as far as the Sabbath and uh, a lot of different things here on the Sabbath. And so, um, again, I thank you for tuning in to Thy Kingdom Come broadcast today. And really, truly, this has been an, an excellent uh, week on the Sabbath. There's more to come next week. We'll still be talking about the Sabbath and hopefully that you've enjoyed everything that you've heard so far regarding the Sabbath day's journey. I want to thank you again, and remember that the power of the kingdom of God is in you. You can do this. All right, walk by faith.